All right, so in the last video, we went over making a character with a camera as well as the official game mode. Um, now we're going to start to look into player controllers and adding some movement to the player. So first, what, do we, what we need to do is come into just kind of the main blueprint area and add a player controller. I have that named to just be main player controller. And within official game mode, we now need to set the player controller class to the one we just created. No longer being the default, it needs to be set to what you just made. Perfect. Um, this matters for movement because there's a few ways to code movement into a character. You can do it as I have in this guy. It's quite messy. Um, this is how I've just had to learn and teach myself. Uh, if you do it within all movement and different controls within the actual character's blueprint, um, it lacks a lot of modularity. You can't add on more characters and them immediately just have the movement. You would have to come into each and code it, hard code it into each character. So if you want uh, a more versatile modular game, um, where you would have multiple characters, I would recommend doing this, uh, especially with multiplayer. A character will interface and interact with the player controller and not the actual um, pawn. This kind of helps just separate uh, authorities and uh, can help prevent some cheating and such. All right, but back to movements. The way this used to be done was an edit, project settings, down in input, you would use action mappings, but here we see it is no longer recommended. In fact, it asks us to use enhanced input actions and input mapping contexts. Um, coming back to just kind of the main blueprint folder, I've created a key mapping folder. Within that folder, right click, input, input mapping context. Yours will be blank. If you add a mapping down here, none, you will not have any options. Those options come from right clicking within the key mapping folder, input, input action. And you need to make an input action for whatever sort of actions you have. I have crouch, a jump, moving left and right, casting, attacking, and so on. What we care about the most is left, right, and jump for now. Um, this is a 2D game, so that's what I will focus on. The left, right, the normal default for any input action is a digital bool under the value type. This is what will matter the most right now. I want to select it to an axis 1D. This will give us, instead of a true or false, it will give us the ability to have a float, a, a value, a number. Um, to the, an axis 2D, from what I understand, it has to do with like a cursor. Um, I don't know if that would be tracking cursor placement or joystick placement within a, a world. Um, and a 3D, I do know, is with uh, VR headsets and tracking hand, uh, doing hand tracking, uh, because that is in literal 3D space. You need uh, 3D vectors. Um, this it works for us though, because we we just need uh, just one value to create some movement. Left, right. Now we come in here. You would add a mapping. Select left, right. The drop down menu will then give you the select the value key. You can press it, change it to whatever you want. I have two of these. You can add as many as you'd like, and in fact, we can start to use all sorts of things. You can use a Steam Deck. You can use HTC Vive. You can use a um, Xbox One controller. Never looked at this. That's kind of interesting. Um, but for our character, we will just need D and A. This is mine personally. Um, I just want to be able to move right, and I want to move left. D for right, A for left. Within our left movement, we do need to add a modifier that is set to negate. So add negate. From the drop down menu else we will only ever get a value of one whenever we press either d or a whenever we use this input action it will only give us the 
um, the float, remember in here, it will only give us this float as one. But we want to be able to move right going one, left going negative one. That comes from adding this here, negate. Perfect. Now, within the main player controller, the first thing you need to do is in event begin play, add this little bit of code right here and make sure this main input action mapping is set to, or the mapping context is set to whatever your input mapping uh, that you just created is. This allows us to actually use the um, in input mapping we made. Um, you could swap them out using this system. You could have multiple types. I don't know. It could be like, I'm actually not sure what you would use that for, but you can do it. We can have different ones easily changed here. Now, to get our character to move, we are going to type in the enhance input action left, right. Add movement input, tie that to the player character, get player character. These can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're just using Unreal. There's loads of get player controller, get player pawns, all sorts of things. Um, if we were to have multiple players in a multiplayer game, you could use this player index. Zero is the player one. Player index one would be two. And this would let us start to work with... Uh, multiplayer allowing movement. Um, it's important that you select from the drop down, setting the action value. This is coming from here again. This is that, that one, and then we set it to also allow for a negative one, setting that to the scale value. If you don't do this, you will only ever get um, a positive number whenever you press your uh, input action. Boom, world direction set to one. You can set it however fast you would like to go. Jump actually has jump functions already created. With the get player character, you can just do jump on started, on completed, stop jumping. And now we can just hop in here. We can move left, right, and we can jump. This is great. Um, if you would like, you can increase the amount a jump is fairly certain that's in here yeah you can you can start to affect some jumping velocity and such too and there you go um in the next video we will cover we will start to cover the actual animation blueprint and transitioning different animations so we don't just look like this we can actually have some some guys moving around and such. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask. And I'll see you in the next video.